Let's talk about the next topic which is about deducing relations among physical quantities based on dimensional analysis. In this video we are going to talk about the time period of a simple pendulum and we'll try to deduce the dependence of time period on multiple different physical quantities. So let's start off we have a simple pendulum which is uh, which has a bob of mass m and it has a string of length l which is under normal earth's gravity has a gravitational acceleration of small g. Now this pendulum is swaying from one end to the other we are interested in calculating the time period of a pendulum. If you don't know about the time period it is simply the time taken by the pendulum to complete one complete oscillation. So if I start from here the pendulum goes all the way up to here and comes back at the same spot the time taken in this entire cycle is called the time period of the pendulum. So for, for the matters of this problem we will assume that the time period depends on these four physical quantities as shown here. The first one is the mass of the bob m, next is the length of the string l, next is the gravitational acceleration g which is simply an acceleration and temperature of the room theta. So if the temperature is more or less based on that the time period of the pendulum is being affected we are assuming. As a student you can also assume more dependencies at your will. Now we will write these dependencies mathematically. So over here I have written time period t is proportional to m raised to an arbitrary power a, l raised to an arbitrary power b, g raised to an arbitrary power c and theta which represents temperature here raised to an arbitrary power d. So over here I can write t is equal to k times m raised to power a small l raised to power b, g raised to power c and theta raised to power d. The capital K here is the constant of proportionality that has come into picture because we have removed the sign of proportionality. For this equation to be dimensionally consistent the dimensions on the LHS and RHS must be exactly equal to each other. The dimensions of the LHS is simply the dimensions of time which is capital T as shown here. The dimensions of the RHS is the product of dimensions of all the quantities mentioned here. First of all we have mass raised to power a its dimension simply m raised to power a. Next length raised to power b dimension simply l raised to power b. Next we have gravitational acceleration raised to power c. We know acceleration is a derived quantity which has a unit of meter per second square. Its dimensions are l t raised to power minus 2 and that is raised to power c. So l t raised to power minus 2 whole raised to power c. And finally we have temperature raised to power d. So we have theta raised to power d as our dimensions. If I, re if I open the brackets and rearrange these terms I can get m raised to power a into l raised to power b plus c into t raised to power minus 2c and theta raised to power d. Now I will equate the dimensions of LHS and RHS. So over here you can see I have equated the dimensions and I can also see that many terms of the RHS are not present in the LHS. The same can be represented as this uh, as you can see here. So over here I have written m raised to power 0, l raised to power 0 and theta raised to power 0 to introduce the terms which are absent on the LHS while at the same time maintaining the integrity of the equation because any quantity raised to power 0 is simply 1. Now I will simply compare the exponents and I can obtain my equations as a equal to 0 because the exponent of m must be equal to each other. Next b plus c is equal to 0 because the exponent of l must be equal to each other. Next minus 2c is equal to 1 because the exponents of time uh, dimension must also be equal to each other here it's minus 2c here it's 1. Next uh, d is equal to 0 because the, uh, the exponent of theta must also be equal to each other. Now solving for these a b c d I finally obtain a is equal to 0 b is equal to half c is equal to minus half and d is equal to 0. As a student you can try solving these by yourself and you can verify your result from here. Now putting these values of a, b, c, d in the older equation back again I obtain time period is equal to k times m raised to power 0 because a value was 0, l raised to power half, g raised to power minus half and theta raised to power 0 putting the values of a, b, c, d back again in the original equation. This ultimately boils down uh, as t is equal to k times square root whole over l by g where l is the length of the string, g is the gravitational acceleration and k is a dimensionless constant. You must understand here though that the time period of simple pendulum does not depend on the mass of the bob, does not depend at all on the temperature of the room. It only depends on two factors which is length of the string and gravitational acceleration. 
So the method of dimensional analysis is a very neat way to derive equations among physical quantities. Now the value of k cannot be obtained by this method and can only be obtained experimentally which comes out to be 2 pi. So the equation ultimately becomes time period is equal to 2 pi multiplied by root of L by G. Let's talk about some limitations of this method. So the value of k or other dimensionless constants cannot be obtained by this method, first thing. Next, it does not distinguish between physical quantities having same dimensions. For example, the dimensions of work and the dimensions of torque, two entirely different physical quantities, is exactly the same, which is ml square t raised to power minus 2. So, these kind of methods will not be able to distinguish between work and torque or any other two quantities having same dimensions. And finally, one cannot deduce equations of the form x0 is equal to ut plus half at square. Or in other words, one cannot deduce equations which have addition and subtraction signs present in between them. Why? Because this method fundamentally relies on the proportionality of multiple other dependencies. So, they are always multiplied to each other. So, I hope these ideas are very very clear to you. Thank you.